Hey, John. How are you doing this morning? Doing pretty good. Hey, quick question for you. Yeah. How does how does my virtual background read to you? Because on my side, it's showing it, it it comes across like it's backwards. But uh, no, it's good. OK. All yeah, right. I guess it's I guess it's the way that they've got it set up now. But it's just interesting in that when I look at myself on screen. Yeah, it, it's it, it's like on that where it says 2021 annual sponsors as opposed to the two being on the left, the S is on the left, and it's like S-R-O-S-N-O-P-S, <laughs> you know, so it's it's kind of like, it, it's kind of throwing me off here as I look at it, because everything just looks backwards. Yeah, no, it looks good, man. It looks All right. Good. I'm going to grab a quick cup of coffee here real quick. Not a problem. Hey, John, I'm going to sign out and come back in because I, I need to do something from a, uh, I think I'm, I think I possibly may need to do something from a host standpoint. So uh, All right, cool. no worries. Let, let, me, let me see here if it'll allow me to, uh, to do this. Okay. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's see here. Ah, that's where it is. So it, it may be too late now. Uh, okay, yep, that's what we gotta do. Hey Morgan, so this, uh, did you set things up this morning? I I don't know what you, what you mean by set. Meaning like I, the, I don't... Meeting, the meeting, the meeting. If so, I wanna share, I just wanna make a note to share something with you afterwards. Okay, I am. Um... I just had to sign on a last minute person and I still don't think that I am the host. I see we've got, I think we've got two. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay. Two chamber people listed as host. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it's funny. You, you got you know, a little bit of how the morning is going to work. Um, after we go through and do some introductions, John is going to actually do a, uh, we, I think we do have maybe one poll, but John is going to do kind of a, a brief presentation. And then from there, I've got some questions I'm going to ask, but we really want this to also be participatory, that I think we've all been in enough, whether they're meetings or Zoom or webinars, where we're kind of just listening the entire time. But this morning, we really want this to be as close to possible as if we were all sitting in a conference room together and with the ability to kind of interject and, and ask questions as they come up and, and share even other experiences and suggestions so that this really does have some dialogue over the next hour or so. And so um, with that, what I'll do is actually, uh, I'll call out those as I see you on my screen just to make it easier and, and so forth in terms of not having to figure out who goes first and second, kind of like when you're on a conference call and you don't know where to speak but um, again, I guess I'm Leonardo McFarty and president of the Howard County Chamber. I also want to just recognize other chamber team members here and Morgan Simonette, who is our director of membership and external affairs and Alex Sullivan, who is our membership assistant and Taylor Tarleton, who is our uh, senior events manager. And so, um, so that's our team. And then from there, I'll start uh, I guess at the top of my screen with, uh, with Kelly from uh, Davis Agnor. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Kelly Spore with Davis Agnor Rappaport and Scalney, um, Director of um, Business Relations and Marketing. So I thought this was a timely event um, to help me kind of get my wheels turning to figure out how to continue to reach out to clients and referral sources for the uh, upcoming year in this different environment. Thank you, Kelly. And you actually did something that I was hoping 
that I meant to actually remind people to do, and you did it without being asked. And, and that is if, as you introduce yourself, if you would share something that you hope to, to maybe gain or obtain um, today. So uh, next will be uh, Larry Litau. Yes, how you doing? My name's Larry Litau. I'm here representing my wife's organization, Respite Retreat. She's a member of the chamber. And, you know, and in, in for the charities, it's been a drastic change, you know. Uh, how do you uh, develop relationships like you did before? How do you hold events? And so I'm just here, you know, I, I love John and I'm here just to listen to see what, he, what wisdom he has. Thanks for being here. Yep, you're on. Leonard is on mute. I know, I'm sorry, I was talking uh, in the house. Um, Erica? Mm. Good morning, I'm Erica D'Alessandro and um, I work for Apartment Restores. So we're a, we're a restoration company that fixes apartments only. So multifamily unit um, and some and commercial buildings when either there's a fire or there's a flood and we get those units rentable again. So um, one of the things that I hope to learn from this conversation is, you know, not a lot of our clients are really, you know, computer savvy. So a lot of them are, you know, in the property management world, and they're used to people coming into the leasing office to have conversation. And now with COVID, that door is shut. And so they kind of don't know how to have those conversations. So how do I have conversations with them when they don't even know how to have outside conversations? So, um, that. <laughs> so have a conversation uh, with virtu uh, virtually with non-virtual people. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. How to convince them that, that it's not scary and that it can be productive, right? Yeah. Wow. So Alexis? Let me unmute. Hi, I'm Alexis Lawson with Howard County Office of Workforce Development. I work with businesses and I help them with retention. And I also work with job seekers as well. So we're always trying to figure out what's the best way uh, during the pandemic to connect with businesses. How do we get them to get the, the right employees? So we've been doing virtual information sessions which has been really, really helpful. Like in a short time, we can create a flyer and then we can get a lot of people sign on, but it's still not the same, you know what I mean? So we're still always trying to figure out how do we do like job fairs, like virtual job fairs. So any connections and assistance. And so we're just gonna keep trying and plugging away until we can really figure out how to get those two back together. So thank you for your support. Thank you. And April. Morning, everyone. I'm April Lichtenberg. I'm the Director of Business Development at Flowers and Fancies. Uh, we are new to the chamber as of December, I believe. Um, John is a good friend, old friend. Hi. Um, and hi there. Um, it's always nice to learn new things. Uh, we, just like everyone else, had to pivot during um, COVID and offer some things that we didn't before. Uh, flower classes is one of them. And we went to a Zoom format and I have to say it's been super successful. Um, I didn't realize that people actually didn't wanna leave their homes. Um, so that's been um, really fun. And I was out and about maybe three nights a week um, meeting people, shaking hands, going to events and that kind of completely disappeared. So just looking for new ways to connect um, with people that we want to know. Excellent. And next, uh, Karen Holstein. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Holstein with Bright Star Care. We're a medical staffing agency as well as skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy personal care and COVID testing and screening for corporations and companies. Um, our entire business has always been built on face-to-face -face networking with referral sources, meeting with families in their home, assessing their situation for their loved one who is aging in place, 
um, as well as doing our orientations with our new employees now, um, which are via Zoom. And we've noticed something interesting in that now that all of our orientations are on Zoom, we have a higher drop-off rate where people will just disappear after they've actually attended an orientation. Um, whereas in the past, when they came into the office and had that physical connection with our company, um, there was better retention. So that's been an interesting thing that we've observed. We're also challenged with doing nursing assessments virtually, which is got its own set of challenges. So I'm here to pick up tips on how we can refine all of those processes in our virtual world. Thank you. And Carol. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carol Susser with The Neighbors Publication. Uh, we are right here in Howard County and uh, we deliver uh, magazines uh, to the homeowners. It's all about family and community. And I was really interested in this topic because um, uh, like, in, like others have mentioned um, in the past, I would always you know, be able to uh, drop off the magazines personally to the people who sponsor the magazine, say hello, keep in touch. And uh, now with the, with the mail service, it's not quite the same. <laughs> so yes, just looking for new inventive ways to stay connected. So thank you so much. Excellent. I think we have just a few more left. Uh, next is Jennifer. Hi there, I'm Jennifer Bowen from UHY Advisors. We're uh, an accounting, tax, and business service um, firm. Um, many of our um, networking has been shut down like everyone else over the past year. We found some different ways to, to do some networking. Uh, it was a little bit easier back in the fall, I guess, when things were a little bit calmer and you could go out and golf or do things outside. But now that it's it's winter time uh, and we get more and more snow here, it becomes a little bit more difficult to to do that kind of networking or or get out and about. Um, I think one of our biggest challenges. Uh, over the last year and for the foreseeable future is um, trade shows and um, exhibit booths and everything is going online. Um, we didn't have a lot of success with those types of events on, with the online events of just getting people to to stop by a virtual exhibit booth. Um, it's, it's easier when they're walking around the trade show booth, uh, trade show floor and you just stop at every booth but in an online you're virtual um, event, you're just going to the ones that you want to go to. You're not stopping by everybody's booth. So I think that's been our biggest challenge. That's tough. And let's see here, uh, Pam Faulkner. Hi, I'm uh, Pam, I'm from Bookminders. We are new to Howard County. Um, we have been in Baltimore for about three years, uh, but we are a 25 year old company. We do outsourced bookkeeping using degreed accountants with five years of experience to replace the functionality of a full to a part-time employee, whether that's a bookkeeper, an accountant, a controller, um, but that's what we do. Um, I'm doing this because I really, I am the business development expert at Bookminders, <laughs> but I am no mean <laughs> the business development expert. Uh, so I wanted to hear and, uh, you know, meet John and hear what he had to say. And um, as Jennifer said, who I, Jennifer is the only person I actually know out here. Um, Jennifer said with trade shows, it's terrible. And you don't want to not support, you know, like Mano, right? But yet, you get nothing from it. At least when people are walking by, you can say hi and they can see your name and, you know, and any thoughts on how to improve that process. But yeah, I'm really just here to meet the expert because I'm not the BD expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, Kimberly Prescott. Hi, um, Kimberly Prescott, um, founder and president of Prescott HR, an outsourced human resources consulting firm. And I joined because I am a John Dinkle fan. So I just wanted to hear what he had to say this morning. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see here. Um, we've got two people on the phone. One is Rob Comfer. 
And I know Rob was having some trouble, uh, I think, being able to unmute himself. And so depending if we can get him unmuted, what I'll do at least for right now is, is two things to, uh, to help Rob. The first thing is I am going to place in the chat his LinkedIn profile. And that way you get a chance to see Rob. And secondly, I'm going to introduce him. And so Rob Comfort is a senior account representative um, and Rob with Interconnect Services, which basically they deal with voice and data and network and design. And actually Rob worked with the, um, our managed service provider that did, I think the cabling in, our, in the chamber's office. But, um, you know, Rob is long time, you know, sales business development person. Uh, and I think someone mentioned, it, I forgot who it was, um, certainly that was, could be at a networking event at 7.30 in the morning, something over lunch, and then something else again in the evening. And so I would imagine that much like what's been mentioned already, some of his challenges would just be continuing to, to pro more so I think to prospect um, and maybe even to qualify some of those prospects with people you meet because you're having to do it at virtual and, and then the ability to follow up and, and so forth. But, uh, but certainly uh, that's Rob Comfort with uh, Interconnect Services. And the last person we have here, the phone number is 443-812-4759. If you can unmute yourself, I'll rename you on my screen here so that everyone can see you. Okay, 443. I think it's Kelly um, Kelly Courtney from um, Sandy Spring Bank because I just added her on right before and she told me she was dialing in. So are you able to, to speak, Kelly? Oh. I'm gonna hope that's her, but I don't wanna rename the box. So, well, maybe Morgan, if it's not, well, at least perhaps if you could tell us a little bit. Uh, okay, she just muted. The person just muted themselves again. <laughs> well, I'll look for her LinkedIn and I'll add it to the chat. All right. Well, with that, I will now move in, uh, you know, introduce John, say a little bit about him. You know, John Dinkle is uh, the owner of Dinkle Business Development. And I guess John and I have had a chance to know one another probably since not long after I came here yeah. to the Howard County Chamber um, when John was at the Baltimore Business Journal. And so many of you, of course, I'm sure probably either know John from that experience and know the name from that experience. But John, besides that, has over 25 years of experience with small to large companies leading business development, sales and operations in the Mid-Atlantic region. He started on this journey at... Uh, the, the nice age of 26. And, uh, and now that he's uh, a little bit older than 26, he's still uh, doing some of these things here as well and, and helps a number of, of clients now, both small business and corporate in terms of with their business development and, and marketing strategy. And so with that, I'm gonna turn things over to John and he'll share a few things. And then after that, like I said, we've got few questions and things prepared, but we'll really have some, some dialogue here. And I just remembered, I think, John, is this when you wanted, um, I'm just looking here at our outline, but anyway, I'll turn things over to you. Yeah, thanks, Leonard. I appreciate it. And good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate it and, and look forward to the, the discussion. Um, big thank you to Leonardo and Morgan and Howard County Chamber for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Um, I like that. Um, I like working in small groups like this. So um, definitely want to keep it as interactive as possible and, and get to as many points as you um, talked about as we can. Um, and if you have any questions, ideas, things that you're working on or working for you, please jump in. I mean, this is this is new to all of us. I mean, no one has done business development in a pandemic before. Um, but because it's what I do and what I was, you know, been trained to do um, for a long time, I've learned a lot in the past, you know, 12 months. And uh, so I want to share some of those things that I've learned with you today. So there's four things I like to talk about. One is just, uh, we'll do a quick exercise on kind of what the challenges you're facing um, right now, and then find, finding the opportunities, you know, in a virtual environment. Um, then I wanna talk about like the changing 
uh, changing your mindset. Um, you know, April, you, you, you talked about this a little bit, but I want to talk about three things when it comes to changing your mindset um, in this, this time. And then the last thing, some specific tactics, you know, a few during this COVID period that have worked well for me and, and for my clients. Um, so um, I'll get right into it. Um, so we all know that, that building relationships is still as relevant um, and important as it was pre-COVID. Um, people do business with people they like and they trust. And, and the best way to build trust is through relationship marketing. So, so let's talk about some challenges and opportunities. Now, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still in the middle of COVID, so things are still really challenging. And what I'd like to ask all of you is, you know, just blur it out. You know, what are the challenges you're facing right now in developing more relationships? And um, I'll just open it up. Um, what, what are some of the challenges? Business is getting back to us. Um, mm -hmm. Just making the time to, to talk to us. I think that's a bit challenging for, for me. Okay, that's good. What else? I know for, I know for me, it's really, it's really comfortable to go up to somebody at a networking event and start up a conversation. Um, and networking events are great because you're not cold calling them in the middle of their day. And, and now business development is a cold call in the middle of their day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for, for me, it's kind of this a similar thing because I would see a lot of my clients and friends and people in the hospitality while I was out and about at events. And now I'm having to find other ways to reach out. So like, picking up the phone, sending an email just to re-engage because I was doing it and not even realizing that I was doing it because I saw them in person all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mostly miss is, is going to events just to reconnect with people. Yeah. Yeah. What else? What are other challenges? For me, I'm new to the position and I'm new to the county. So I'm trying to meet people for the first time um, virtually. So where some of my counterparts in other offices may have had a year to 10 years of experience working with the referral sources that they need, I am trying to start a relationship 100% virtually. I'm in the same boat, Karen. I'm, I switched industries. So not only am I switching, you know, geography, I'm, I'm literally switching language. Yeah, it's very difficult. Very, very difficult. Um, anything else? Well, for me, I do a lot of um, networking via Zoom, and so I just try, it's hard to not get Zoom fatigue and just get tired of being on the calls, and then sometimes you see the same people on the calls and you're trying to weed through, okay, who haven't I talked to on this call? How do I reach out to this person? So just really being more focused in those networking events that we do have and just taking more advantage of them because sometimes you're just tired because you've been at your desk all day and it's five o'clock and you have another zoom meeting yeah 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 that's a big one that's a really big one that's good uh, great um you know so you, you brought up a lot of things you know there, there are some definitely some challenges right now um and one of the biggest ones that you know we all touched on is you not being able to get face to face with people and, and inter interact and it's, and it's affected a lot of businesses but yeah you don't get that personal kind of two-on-two connection or bond you know you're there's no more, you know, in-person network. It takes longer to build relationships, it seems. Um, there's less socialization, you know, meetings seem to be quicker, you know, which can be a, a good thing too. Um, there's, there's um, you know, there's a lot there. It's hard to develop a relationship on the screen. So I totally get that. But um, at the same time, you know, there are some positives to this. So, you know, because everything has become virtual, um, um, you know, what are some of the, the positives that you would say? What, what's been good about all of this? I would say actually time management from the perspective of if you think about it, yes, we missed the virtual events, but depending on where those events were taking place, you might have 30 minutes in the car getting there, 30 minutes in the car getting back, and forever how long it took while you were there. And whereas now, you know, sometimes you can squeeze in an extra appointment or two mm -hmm. because the meetings are shorter and you don't have travel. Absolutely. It's a good one. What, what else? What are the other advantages and positives? Everybody's yeah. in the same boat. <laughs> what, what's that? I'm sorry. Everybody's in the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
I found that um, there are more events like these. So it's smaller events, bringing people together, being able to talk with people who you would never have connected with before. I think some of um, the, the larger events um, where they've done breakout sessions and you can do a networking breakout session beforehand have been very positive. And I've been making sure to, to push um, my accountants towards those types of events to make sure that they, they are getting into these small groups and they're meeting people and it's an easier way for them to meet people. So when they go out into the real world in a couple of months, hopefully they will have these connections and are able to, to talk to people. They won't be a room. It won't be a room full of faces. They don't know. They'll actually have connected with people. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Um, for, for me on a more personal note, um, it, made me slow down. Uh, we live in such a fast paced world that the one positive thing out of COVID was it made me slow down. Um, I have three kids, two are um, almost out of the house. Well, one's out of the house, one almost. And it gave me that time that I would have never otherwise had. Yeah. So yeah. silver lining. That's a good one too. Yeah. Any other positives that you see? One other thing is I've been able to expand my network. Like as much as I love Howard County and the chamber and Leonardo, um, I've been able to go to Tal like do events in Ta that would have been in Towson or events that would have been in Annapolis or Montgomery County because it's all virtual. So now my network has tripled in size because I'm not limited to, to the travel point. I can't get there in time or I drop my kid off at school. I can't be in Hunt Valley at seven. Now I can kind of do more things. Yeah, excellent one. Love that I'm one. I'm going to just tag on to that. This is Kelly Spore. Um, I actually saw Kimberly, her face in my Instagram feed because she was doing something with Frederick Magazine. So um, kudos to you, Kimberly, for spreading your wings and getting out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so you see, I mean, there's a lot of positives to this. I mean, I, you know, I, I tend to have a more optimistic attitude. Um, I think the most people, but you know, what I've seen is all those things that you all have mentioned, you, you have access to people that may, you may not have had before. I mean, people seem to be more willing to, to talk and have one-on-one -on -one conversations and whether it's a phone call or a quick zoom or something like that. I think it's also forced a lot of people to, you know, kind of build their LinkedIn profiles and, and be better content generators. And um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I, I like the casualness of it, too. I mean, we were talking beforehand, I think Leonardo and, and uh, Larry, um, about um, uh, the, uh, was it the, the account executive had a, uh, like a tie on, I think, right? I mean, you don't just, you don't see that. It's a lot more casual. You kind of get to see into people's lives a little bit. When you, you know, their backgrounds, you can see what books are on their shelf or their cat jumps into their lap or their kid. I, I kind of like that. You do get a little, some personalization there that, you know, that, you know, I miss um, when meeting people in, in person. Um, um, I like the idea of, you know, not having to travel. Um, I was traveling a lot. And now I have more time to spend with clients and more time to do business development. I'm saving money. So there's a lot of things out there. Um, and, and there are a lot of companies that are really taking advantage of this and start and really thriving, you know, so, um, so great job, everyone. Um, so we talked about the challenges and some of the opportunities there. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the mindset. Um, I think having the right mindset to change is critical in developing business right now. I mean, um, you know, what you did before COVID may not work now. Um, I moderated a panel back in the spring um, with three national um, experts on business development. And, you know, one of my big takeaways um, on that was kind of having a different mindset about this. And so, um, you know, Kim, you actually brought this up and one of the three things that, you know, I wanted to, to talk with everyone about, but the first one, you know, and, and there's three things. So one is, um, new markets, you know, because of COVID, you know, you know, I would really urge you to think about like new industries or new markets, new products or services that you, you should, or could be doing right now that you maybe you didn't do before. You know, um, April, you mentioned, you know, the flower classes, you know, things like that and having to pivot a little bit, you know, is, is, 
the industry that you used to rely on kind of fading because of this or was really hurt and you and, and forcing you now to think of different industries that might be booming because of COVID, like real estate or professional services or home improvement. There's a lot of companies out there that are, are doing well. So are your products and services, can you, you know, pivot those to open a new market there, you know, um, to reach those new markets and, and do your products and services apply to companies outside of, you know, Howard County in the Baltimore region, if, if they haven't before, you know, in many instances, not all, but in many instances, you know, we're not bound by geography anymore. It's, it, we can, you know, we can, we can go anywhere. Um, and, and also what complementary services do you offer that maybe you didn't think about before? Um, for me, you know, back in the fall, I, um, I typically, you know, do business development strategy and, and implementation, but um, I opened up a, a bunch of new services. And one was content creation and content strategy, you know, because it's a complementary service to what I'm doing. Um, I coach people on that, but now I have a team of experts that will do content creation, you know, so, you know, that was something that kind of came up that I probably wouldn't have thought about before. Um, Another one that was brought up in this panel, what I thought was interesting was what are the needs of your clients now? You know, how has that changed? And can you develop a new service or product that meets their new needs? You know, so uh, another example is, you know, um, I started doing business development recruiting, you know, because I noticed that, you know, early on people were having to get rid of their, in some cases, getting rid of their business development folks. And now they're starting to hire back. Well, that's a new need you know, for a client that I, I mean, I, between the, all of us, do I have a ton of, I've never been an executive recruiter, nor do I want to be at full time, but if I can help them, you know, find that new person, that's a need that they, they that I can fulfill. And, um, you know, and, and it's a win-win for both of us. So the point here, I guess, is to kind of change the mindset of, about these new markets and new services. Um, so I would ask anybody want to jump in on that point and, you know, um, anyone who want to share any of those, um, any changes you've made, um, and pivoting kind of your products or, or starting new products or services because of COVID. I was going to say, John, I, I don't know if, if Leonardo has something to say on comment to that, but he did have a question and his hand raised a little earlier. I don't know if it. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't yeah, go for it. Uh, no, don't worry. No worries. I'm going to actually come back. I wrote it down. And so, John, when we get to our point of kind of the, um, I guess, discussion or whatever, I'll bring it back up then. And, and so, uh, so it, it's good. But I guess I'll, I'll speak to that, um, maybe that question. I mean, I think even just from a chamber standpoint, you know, COVID in some respects forced us to do some things we had been talking about, but never actually did. So as an example, we had discussed, you know, hey, maybe we should do some things via webinar, or maybe we should do more, you know, do a, at least implement some, some virtual things, recognizing that sometimes when people don't, from, from our standpoint, when people don't re-engage in a chamber, they'll say, oh, it's because I'm too busy, I can't make it out. So the thought was, okay, well, let's make it easy. And if, you're, if you can't get out, but we can still offer some good content and information online, yeah. Well, we had talked about it probably for at least better parts of a, a year or more, but COVID kind of basically pushed us into the deep water and basically said swim. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, so I, I think if, if nothing else, that's been a positive. And so now when things do return, I guess, um, to more traditional settings, I think we'll be able to have another offering in the sense of, hey, you know, everything doesn't have to always, you know, be online and I mean, be, you know, in person, person right. just again, as you try to balance personal and, and professional responsibilities. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so the second thing is like the Kimberly, you brought this up on like new connections, you know, think about the opportunities that COVID has forced us to think about there. Like, you know, taking advantage of this virtual networking part because it's getting better. Like, you know, um, you know, I was at a Howard County networking event, I think it was last week and they did kind of like speed dating stuff, which was really interesting. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was really the first time I've been the, done the speed networking thing, but a lot of associations, organizations are getting better at doing the breakout sessions and smaller group stuff. So, 
So definitely take advantage of that. Um, I've only recently started getting back into that in November because I don't, you know people hadn't figured that out yet. But also, you know, think about you know centers of influence and referral partners that aren't. You're not just limited again to your region. You know, think about identifying new centers of influence or referral partners or strategic alliances that, you know, kind of can help you break into that new market or new service. Um, you know, we'll talk about social media in a minute, but you know, broadening your scope there is obviously a great way to you know expand your connections. And if you're you're an avid user already, you know, Kimberly, I know you're you're very. Um, you know, you're very um, strong when it comes to your content and things like that. Um, if, if you are an avid user like Kimberly, then, you know, think of ways to expand on it, you know. Um, sign up for business associations in other markets or states. You know, I've had a couple of uh, clients and friends that have done that and starting to attend their meetings, you know, um, in, a, in a new market. Um, because now, again, it's, it's, you know, we're not um, in many cases not geographically bound. And there's a couple of ones that have come up um, in the past couple of months that um, I've joined. One is called Lunch Club. If you don't know about that, I would look that up. And then there's one called Am Spirit Business Connections. Um, if you're looking for something outside of the region and, and meeting people all over the country, it's pretty neat. Can you stick those in the chat? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so it was Am Spirit and Lunch Club. Let's see here, do that real quick. Um, so Lunch Club. Actually, Lunch Club is all over the world. Um, Am Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Um, the third thing, I, as far as the mindset piece, is you know, since COVID has limited our face to face interactions, um, it's kind of helped us focus on kind of new ways or new um, um, tactics to use that maybe we haven't met, done before or we thought we were going to do them. We just never got around to it, but it's kind of forced us, you know. So if you've relied on you know, networking, for example, to kind of grow your business or just relied on referrals, you know, you've, you've had to change, you know. Um, so there's a lot of other methods out there that you can use, um, including center of influence marketing, partner events, content, um, strategic alliances, referral strategy. Oh, there's, there's a myriad of things that you can use. And I would encourage you to, you know, kind of get yourself out of your comfort zone and try some of these things, you know, because even though they've all existed before, you know, COVID, all those things, we just didn't think about using them or needed to use them or maybe felt like we didn't have the skill set to use them. But now's a great time to really kind of shake things up and, you know, start to try some of those things. So I guess, you know, what, what I'm saying when it comes to the mindset is just take some time, sit back, you know, kind of think about those things uh, when it comes to your business and think about how you could be going after a different market, uh, having a different service, finding new ways to make connections and just trying some new tactics. Um, so, John, actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and ask a question here. Yeah, yeah, and, sure. And so, you know, you mentioned as an example, you put in the chat, you know, Lunch Club, Lunch Club and, and Am Spirit. And so my follow up on that is, I guess, as an example, how did you find those um, and maybe why those versus something else? Um, do they offer as an example, like a free visit or something? I mean, because ultimately, you know, as we all know, there are a number of different business groups we can be a part of, sure. but each time you decide to, to participate, there's a cost. And yeah. so how did you, how, what advice maybe would you say in terms of, um, how do you figure out which one is going to, is working for you? You know, I like this one, didn't like that one. This one adds value. This one didn't, you know, when they're just a plethora of different, um, organizations or, or opportunities. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So when it came to those two that I mentioned, I, um, I was referred to them by a friend, um, and the lunch club is free. And what I, what my purpose and am, am spirit and lunch club was to meet people outside of the DMV uh, because my services can be all over the country and to start making, building some relationships somewhere else. And I have clients that might, that do business all over the country. So I want to look out for them too. If I run across somebody through lunch club um, and they're a, they could be a potential client or for my client, then I want to introduce them. So it, de it, it all depends on what your motive is. If you can do business outside the area or you have clients that are interested in doing outside the area, then kind of investigate some of those um, um, uh, groups that will, that, that, you know, cater to that, you know, the AM spirit one, I think that's free too. There could be a small cost to that. 
But that was my motive for looking into those two groups um, because, you know, I feel like, you know, I know a lot of the groups around this area. I'm starting to get involved with more of the Northern Virginia DC ones, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to kind of expand a little bit and, and meet other people. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, any other questions about kind of the mindset stuff? And I'll get into these kind of three tactics and then we can have a chat. All right, so, so last thing I wanna talk about are kind of three tactics that I'm currently using to build more relationships and drive more leads. Um, and I'm also, you know, using these tactics for clients. Um, and I'll do the condensed version because I could talk about all these things for at least an hour. Um, so the three things are um, strategic alliances, con content strategy, and then center of influence marketing. Um, so the strategic alliance stuff has re been really interesting. Um, so, you know, my definition of a strategic alliance as it pertains to business development is when one company uh, builds a relationship with another company, organization, or association for mutually beneficial outcomes. And I've noticed that organizations are more willing these days to, to you know, help one another out. It's, it's tough out there. And they're more open to these types of partnerships and strategic alliances. And I look at them in two ways. One is a strategic alliance with another company that also targets your market, um, but you're not competitive. And so, for instance, you know, um, a law firm and an accounting firm developing a partnership with a commercial real estate firm to, to do an event or something like that. Um, the second is a strategic alliance with an association or business organization or nonprofit whose members are your prospects and that you can give those members value in some way. You know, all of you can give value in a lot of ways to the, these member organizations. And, you know, for example, if you're, you know, targeting CFOs, then, you know, um, connecting with Financial Executives International, the Baltimore chapter might be a good one. And there's, there's a lot of organizations and membership organizations that are hurting right now. So, you know, membership sound, uh, you know, the, the events uh, revenue stream is kind of dried up a little bit and they need to provide value. And so that's where you can really help. And the more value you can bring to their organization, the, the better the relationship can be and, and the more opportunity you'll have to get in front of their audience. And I'll give a recent example and, and, and Kimberly could probably, you know, attest to this because she was part of one of these that I did, but you know, recently I hosted a virtual panel discussion for, for someone and we formed a strategic alliance with a commercial real estate association here in Baltimore um, to partner with us on the event. Um, what we wanted from them is that help us promote it to their membership, of course. And in return, you know, we joined the association and we used their logo and all the marketing uh, so that they could get exposure. And we also provided them with an attendee list. Well, additionally, um, on the panel, we invited a, a prospect and we also invited a referral partner, which was another strategic alliance, to sit on the panel with the client um, so they could build the relationships there. Um, and it ended up being a, a huge success. Um, you know, the, the, the association was able to kind of get their brand out there, meet new people, get some more you know, exposure and provide good content for their members. And then, you know, the client was really happy because they got their brand out to new people and they got to build a couple new relationships, you know. So, you know, the, the, the great thing about these is, again, I think a lot of people are more um, open to doing these types of partnerships. Um, the challenge, I think, is to think about companies or associations that you can involve yourself in and provide value. Um, and that's where the big thing is, you know, how can you help your strategic alliance get more members, get more exposure, um, you know, get more clients. And, you know, three things is content, speaking opportunities and introductions. And, and yeah, they do take some time, but, but not that much time. I mean, um, you know, again, I think people are more open to these um, because of the situation. It's a good time to take advantage of that. Um, you do need to build some trust there and provide value and all that, but it's, it's a tactic that's been proven really effective. Um, is, is anyone out there right now doing any type of strategic partnerships that you would want to share? Um, we are. Uh, we've been doing them even before COVID, but I definitely think it's more important now just to yeah. be out there. Um, one thing I would say is just make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, that it aligns with what your company is doing. We get asked a lot to be involved with a lot of things. And we 
say no a lot <laughs> for that reason. Um, not everything um, works out and it has to be beneficial to both. And I say that all the time. Um, but yeah, we just did a Valentine's Day giveaway, which it's Valentine's week for any of you that forgot. And it's uh, <laughs> super crazy. And um, it's a real estate agency that's pretty popular. And um, they're already a client. So really, there was no reason to say yes, except that they do this kind of stuff of engagement with their old clients, new clients and vendors. And I think we picked up like 50 new followers in three days on social media. So there's always tactic to why you're doing it. Um, did they need it? Probably not. We ended up benefiting from it and they're doing something fun for their clients. Yeah, that's great. That's a good example, April. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. Um, and then, so um, the second thing I'd like to talk about is our tackle would be content strategy. And I know everybody's probably been bombarded like crazy with this because it was kind of one of the first things that everybody, um, you know, went to when the, the pandemic hit. But um, it's an important one. And I still think there's a lot of folks out there that don't have good content strategy, you know, and which basically, you know, uh, in my definition of that, it's just developing a system that uses content to provide educational benefit to your audience and help you grow your brand as a thought leader in that space and also drive inbound leads, you know? And so you, when we think of content, we mostly think of the social media brands, right? But it can include anything like newsletters, blogs, podcasts, videos, speaking engagements, webinars, all kinds of things provide content. Um, so the one thing I always recommend is, you know, when you're getting into this is developing an editorial calendar and keeping it simple, look at just three months out, map out what your themes will be for, for each month, because it'll just help to keep you focused and, and could also help you target specific audiences or industries. Uh, it'll just help you plan your content better by doing a, a, you know, an editorial calendar. And then when it comes to the strategy, just keeping in consideration, um, you only know, have a couple of minutes to talk about this, but start small. If you're not doing it now, one social media post a week is great. I mean, like if you're not doing it now on a consistent basis, uh, you know, just start, start small. Um, if you're already doing social and have a system down, take it to the next level. Do blogs, do newsletters, do podcasts, you know, something else. Just keep expanding on that. Um, I can't tell you enough how impactful, you know, that has been for me over the past six to nine months in doing more and more and more content. It, it just builds and builds and builds. And, you know, it really does help you get your, your name out there a lot. The, the other thing is uh, creating a system of content generation. So, um, are you, you know, you're producing the in-house in or are you outsourcing it? Because if you don't have a system and you're not doing it consistently, just like any other type of marketing, it's just not, it's your, your results are going to be limited. Um, and then the last thing about that is just holding yourself accountable, you know, have having regular content meetings with your team um, or a friend or a, a colleague or a coach, just to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable to, to that editorial calendar and that consistency. I saw a quote recently, um, it, was, it said, um, content marketing provides four times the ROI of a traditional marketing spend. And I, I, I believe that if you're doing really good content marketing and content strategy, then yeah, you know, that's a really good tactic you should should be using. And then the last so, one, so, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just real, a while, just on there. Um, so, what are some of the ways in which um, you're actually, um, I guess, judging or tracking effectiveness? So that, and 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 how do you, for the stuff that you're doing or for your clients, how do you, um, um, I guess, again, det what, what what how do you determine success? What is success? And, and or at least what do you tell your clients that success should look like or at least some of the things that they should be thinking about because obviously for some maybe it's just the awareness for others it's how many clicks they get for others it's am I actually really getting a chance to speak so what is how do you figure out what success looks like yeah no, that's a good question so some of the more sophisticated folks that I'm working with will track you know um click-throughs you know um um, engagement and, um, you know, number of um, views on their site, page views, unique visitors, all that kind of stuff. And that's, which, which does make, you know, content strategy and, and that kind of content and digital marketing easier to track. I mean, for me, I'm less sophisticated. I know that when, uh, when I see and I put up a good post and I have a lot of 
you know, views and comments and things like that, it leads to conversations, you know, and if I'm doing it on a consistent basis, I can see it. I can see like, you know, when I put up a, a post or a blog or something like that, I get response from it. And, you know, and it's, Hey, John, uh, oh my gosh, I mean to talk to you, you know, like um, let's, let's try to get together next week. You know, so I'm, I'm using it a little less like scientific. Um, but I do notice that when I'm posting and I'm posting on a regular basis and I, you have to be really choosy with the topics. I mean, it, um, you can't just put anything out there. I mean, um, I mean, that's a whole nother session around, you know, what good content could look like and how to track it and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, to answer your question, you know, um, from, from more of my sophisticated folks, yeah, they're tracking, you know, inbound lead generation to their website. Um, and then, um, for the less, you know, sophisticated like me, I'm just, I just, I can see, I know when I'm posting stuff and I know when I put out a blog, I'm getting more LinkedIn connections. I'm getting, and I use LinkedIn primarily, um, LinkedIn connections. I'm getting more, um, um, comments. I'm getting more, um, outbound, you know, kind of reach or inbound calls to me. Um, so hopefully they answered the question shortly. <laughs> Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was a really good one, which is the center of influence referral marketing. And, and this has always been a good tactic. And I think a couple of you have mentioned referral marketing. Um, and I, I, I coach a lot around this and, and, um, and just to define COI, I define it as a highly networked individual that you're meeting with or touching regularly. And it's a mutually beneficial relationship. So, you know, their business, um, they know yours and, and COI, COI referral marketing is creating a system around building those relationships that will help you generate more leads and expand your network. So, you know, I think, you know, some of the key points to this are having a really give to get mentality. You know, if you haven't read the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, I highly recommend that. Um, you know, and when you're, when you're meeting with your COIs, it's important to keep them top of mind, you know, understand their business, who are their prospects and how can you help them? You know, how can you give them value? Can you give them an introduction? Can you give them more information? Do, um, can you invite them to a virtual event? There's lots of things that you can do um, because the, the idea with this is when they're out there talking to their network and, um, and, and, and someone uh, in their network talks to them about a problem that they're having and you're the solution, you know, guess who's going to get that lead if you're providing them value and staying top of mind? It's going to be you. And, and, and this, is, this is a huge one. And I think there's some people out there that do it really good. There's some people that just don't spend enough time on it. And I've, I've actually put aside a lot of some of the things I do and really focused on center of influence, networking, or, or marketing over the past four months. And it's, it's, it's been amazing. I've gotten eight referrals in the past six weeks. I mean, it's, it's, it's been awesome. Um, a couple of pointers there is just be prepared for that meeting, you know, with your center of influence, go on LinkedIn, check out their profile, check out their connections. What are they marketing now? Like, you know, who are their contacts? Try to learn as much as you can about them. Um, an important thing too, is selecting the right centers of influence. I've, I've, I've seen situations where, where people aren't picking the right folks, that they're not as highly networked. They're friends, they're great friends, but like you really want somebody who's out there like meeting lots of people that when they, you have a service and then you run into them, they're, they're, gonna, they're, they're gonna mention you. Um, so look for some, some people that have big networks, they're givers, they, they, they frequently talk to prospects of yours. Um, they're in similar but non-competitive businesses. Um, and also be prepared to, to tell them how you can help, how they can help you, you know, give them a, a good understanding of the problem you solved, the clients you've helped, uh, your target audience. And in many cases, this is a long-term strategy. Building those relationships can take time, especially, you know, if, if you're new to the market, um, the sooner you get started working on it, the better. Um, um, however, if you do have a good, strong network and know lots of centers of influence, I think, you know, one of the biggest tactics I've used is looking at the last three years, make a list of all the folks that have given you referrals, whether you won the business or not, and then systematically start reaching out to them and making sure that you're giving them value. Like I have a spreadsheet that has like nine uh, touch points, you know, and I've got about 45 centers of influence that I'm reaching out to on a regular basis, but there's not, there's nine touch points where I can give them value and, and I'm doing it consistently and it's, it's working really well. Um, so, um, 
sorry for rushing through that, but I know we're running out of time, but I just want to add, you know, want to have some, some, uh, you know, more discussion or any questions or anything like that. So, um, so John, you've got a, a question that's in the chat that uh, basically is from Karen that just says, are you seeing any new challenges to get attention to social media content since everyone is competing for more attention than, you know, in that same space? Yeah. Any tips perhaps um, yeah, that you might that, offer? That's a good one. I, you know, what I've been telling people and talking to people about is um, diversity um, and just, you know, content is king. You know, I, I had this discussion yesterday with someone where we're mapping out their, their, um, um, their editorial calendar and we're thinking of things, what's going to different, they're in a very highly competitive market and business. So what are some things that are going to really set them aside? And they are those thought pieces. They're keeping things really short, you know, cause link, especially in LinkedIn, you know, you've got the attention span, you know, a couple of seconds, you know, my best posts have been third, you know, three or four sentences sometimes. So, so keeping them really short, really good titles, you know, um, so that it leads. Uh, so when people see it, they're interested. Um, also, the, the diversity part, use graphs, use like statistics to get people's attention. Um, just really mix it up. You know, um, if you're into video, videos are great. Obviously, on LinkedIn, they, they get really good viewership. Um, so, so, yeah, having to rise above the noise um, can be hard. But you know, over time, if you're, if you're mixing things up and you're getting, getting really good content, you're getting people's attention, it'll, you'll start to, you'll start to, you'll start to rise above it a little bit. So, yeah. So John, I guess another question, um, and Kimberly just posted a, a good follow-up in the chat. Another question I was going to ask you going back to something that was discussed earlier on the new markets piece. And, and that was ultimately, you know, the, because of technology and right now everybody being stationary, that's a positive for being able to find network in places maybe you typically wouldn't go to. But what are your thoughts or perhaps even ideas that when things get back to what I, I'm using the word tradition now as opposed to normal, because what is, because I say what is normal. <laughs> and so when things get back to more traditional norms, you know, how will we, how would you suggest people then balance in terms of cultivating these new relationships that they've made, but before they were too far to go out, but now you've made them. And so just to use Kimberly's example, you know, she's connected with the group in Hunt Valley or in Annapolis that before was tough to get to. Now she's connected with them, but yet let's just say it's six months from now. And now it's the same drop, the same problem that was there in the beginning that, man, I can't get to, um, you know, up in Hunt Valley by 5.30. Yeah. You know, so what are, I guess, what are your comments there? Or, or at least thoughts um, yeah. in terms of as we start to try to balance that back out? Yeah, I think uh, my thoughts are there's still going to be a lot of virtual networking after. I think things are going to are going to be completely different even after the vaccine is, you know, a year from now. I, I don't I don't think it's ever going to go back to, you know, the old ways. I think because everybody's a lot more... Um, you know, sophisticated about these Zoom meetings, feels a lot more comfortable about the technology. I, I think there's going to be situations where I have, you know, contacts across the country or in Northern Virginia or wherever it is that I, we'll just we'll just hook up via Zoom from here on out. If I'm happen to be down there, maybe look them up. But I think that'll be okay, and I think I think people will understand that and accept that. Um, so I think it's really I think it's changed. I, I just I just think that. Um, it's not going to go ever go back to normal. The fact that you have some uh, really good relationships. I have clients I've never met before in person. It's the weirdest thing, but like I have great relationships with them. I mean, you know, we're like hug virtually. I mean, it's like we have great relationships, but so I, I think, um, I think that's, I think that's going to be the norm. I think it's going to be okay to have relationships, you know, like that. And so just maybe last question before we uh, close things out. And this would be John. Um, if you had, if, you know, obviously you've talked about three tactics, three tactics to consider now, changing your mindset, opportunities in virtual, um, et cetera. If there was one thing though, that you hope people take away from today, maybe what would it be? I would say get, get out of your comfort zone and, and try something new. 
<laughs> there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's a lot of positives about um, what COVID has done. Um, and just, just get out of your comfort zone. Try something, try something different. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that uh, we're right at 1030 and I always want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I'm sure we could probably hang on here for those that, that would like to. We can easily sure. leave this open um, for another few, you know, probably 10 minutes or so for those who just want to talk, network or, or what have you. But just want to remind you of a, a few upcoming events uh, with the chamber, um, particularly for those of you that may either serve government contractors or are a government contractor. Um, tomorrow's Biz Breakfast is with U.S. Cyber Command. And so that should uh, be a, an excellent opportunity again for, for business development and insights there. Also, um, the 24th is gonna be the state of business with uh, County Executive Ball. And so that will be at uh, 11 o'clock on the 24th. And then on the 25th is our Celebrate series. Um, and so we've got a busy month. There are some other activities taking place, but those are just ones I wanted to highlight. And so again, thank you all for, for joining us this morning. If you have to leave, certainly understandable, not a problem. If you want to hang on and just continue to dialogue, feel free to do so as well. But thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, thank Leonardo. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And I guess, Taylor, we could probably stop the recording from here. <laughs>